Napoleon's Rise to Power. The Directory, the five-man group that had come to power to end the radical phase of the French Revolution, had done good things for France, but they were unable to maintain the momentum they had started for very long. Many of its members were self-serving and corrupt, which led to the people losing confidence in their ability to lead. France had been ruled by an absolute monarch for centuries, and while the French people may have been happy to no longer have a king, they needed a strong and powerful leader running their country. Fortunately for them, there was just such a man already involved in the government. A short, stubborn man from the island of Corsica had already helped France achieve great victories as the nations of Europe with monarchies lined up against them after the beheadings of King Louis XVI and Marie Antoinette. As a child, Napoleon Bonaparte had received a solid education, which gave him the opportunity to enter the country's finest military schools. The land that he had gained in battle had been redistributed to the unemployed of France, making him their hero. In short, he was ready to rule the nation. Napoleon and two members of the directory launched a coup d'etat, which is a sudden change in government led by a small group of people. Soon after this, Napoleon ordered a plebiscite, or a vote of the people, in which he would be the only candidate. This would give people the belief that they had chosen Napoleon, even if the reality was something quite different. Once in power, Napoleon made changes he hoped would improve the lives of the French people. He created lycées, or state schools, in which people would be trained to be government employees. These schools were open to anyone who wanted to attend them, which only raised people's love for Napoleon. He created a new set of laws called the Code Napoleon, or Napoleonic Code, which was an effort to treat all the people of France equally. In reality, the code actually took away some of the rights that had been granted to the French people by the National Assembly, but very few people seemed concerned about it. He also made an agreement with the Catholic Church called the Concordat that brought the people of France back into the good graces of the Catholic Church. This was important because the majority of the French people were Catholic. Napoleon then had the people elect him consul for life. In his boldest move, as he was about to be crowned emperor by the Pope, Napoleon took the crown from the Pope and placed it on his own head. With his power now total in France, Napoleon could look to increase his influence and control over the rest of Europe.